à Tata. Vale, lo ves à Vimumana. Il y a ta valafo. Nareva foco xende sa vikupo à ton avanandi. Gatua combo kakuskulu. Non banchi à kuskulu. Nava nandi, shiva muna. Mbafia neka, chila kushiku. Uku pianga, uku tapa menshi, no kuipika. Elio ba mayo senge valiku mabala. In Zambia, education is free at primary school level, but when um, students pass grade seven to go into grade eight, there are fees that are involved. The parents have a difficult choice of trying to pay for both boys and girls, but the preference really when you have um, less resources is for them to pay for boys. There are many girls that drop out of the school system. They go into early marriages. Traditionally, the belief is that the boy, once educated, they will get into a job or get into some business and then support the girls. The main objective is to ensure that girls are kept in school no matter what challenges they're encountering. Uh, I've been supported by the Bazari from grade 8 to 12 and that's been four years now. Um, the bursary has given me support of being in boarding and they've also given me things for school. The school-based committee as a support system ensures that the most needy girls are selected for the bursary program. In that meeting, that's where we decide what to buy for our girls. We monitor schools with the DEBs to ensure that the clans are eligible to receive such a support. And then we ensure that they are in school, we track them even as they progress, and ensure that retention is in place as well. Teacher mentors are trained to offer counseling to these girls. Where they are failing, I provide guidance and help to them so that they move forward. When I was young, my dad passed away and there there was no one to support me. So my auntie and uncle got me to stay with them. I wouldn't like do the things that their children used to do. They used to go like, no, you don't have to follow what our children do because your family is like very poor. You should look at the backgrounds where you come from. They would go out, but then I would stay home doing nothing. Sometimes I would just sit in a corner crying and asking. Sometimes I would even blame God why he has brought me to this world. It's the child that is uh, staying with uh, other people other than the biological parents that are more likely not to be in school. They have less support and they have less, uh, less protection. So um, these children face a lot of challenges. There are a lot of girls in that situation in Zambia. If I wasn't here, if I was just home, I could have just been like maybe cleaning up for my aunties, my uncles, while well others are going to school. I remain doing my work at home. Having been involved in, in a household uh, domestic uh, work, then coming back home, they would probably face punishment. The situation of girls is dire. In 2014, a UNICEF report did indicate that there were over 500,000 children of school going age that were not in school. Challenges of you know, access to education, progression and retention are still big issues that we are battling with as a country. Sometimes a poor wapeza, sometimes a sooner peasy. So capes are putting dramas are cheaper. Near Vijavoti or Unjala, Ingena Panyumba, or on dramas out in the pays, which one in the school, and the pesica, needy bay. Dad and mom never used to have enough money to pay for my school fees. Yeah, so sometimes I would stay out of classes for maybe a week or a month. I'll be just at home. Yeah. I'm so happy when I heard about that tea. my child has been picked. I'm so happy. Um, the support that we give to our beneficiaries of has, uh, comes in three forms. We have what we call the individual child support. Uh, they do pay off our school fees. They buy us uniforms and school equipment. 
what we are supposed to spend on Chipo now, it is benefiting the whole family. We are able to buy bathing soap, a washing paste. So the second level of support is the support we give to this child through the family. So we engage the parents or the guardians and explain to them that this child has been given an opportunity to progress with their education and that there is need for the family to provide support also. My life has changed because I've started going to school every day, every day, every day. Then the third support is a school level support where we speak with school administrators uh, and explain to them the purpose of the bursary. We do help children form uh, study groups. These are groups where children support each other. So the, uh, the study group then becomes a platform where these children that are not so good at mathematics, for example, will be helped by those that are quite good at it. So sometimes after classes we would go study under a big tree at school. My friend is one who decided to make that study group so that we at least post ourselves. So the children in examination classes uh, take their exams uh, between October and November and uh, the results are only ready between January and February and in between children just help out at home. <sighs> the exams uh, went a, a bit hard, okay I can say they are hard. Uh, I'm really nervous and scared because if I don't pass then my mom and dad will get into problems and then they'll start shouting at me. Our interest is that these children pass. It's very clear, the agreement that we have with our sponsors is that children are only going to be paid for as long as they're able to pass. Children keep thinking, oh, where well, the results are coming out and am I making it or not? So there's, it's a waiting period. It's a period when children are very anxious. The absolute best thing about the bursary is that they've brought me into a boarding school and that I have loved it. After school, when I reached the boarding house, I changed my uniform, draw some water to wash my uniform. There are a lot of activities that go on in a boarding school. We go with drama clubs, debate clubs, jet clubs. We start making all sorts of activities to present to our fellow friends. If there's no activities going on, I just get my book, make some groups with my friends. It has kept me busy in a boarding because I'm there studying, asking my friends on how to go about things that I don't know. Then 2030, after done with prep, I go to sleep, then zero three hours, wake up again, start studying, passing through the things that I used to study last night. Then after that, I go to bath preparing for the morning sessions. I fell pregnant in 2003. That was when I was in grade 11 and 20 years old. I thought of stopping going to school because I was scared that my friends would be laughing at me. I wouldn't be concentrating. Once a girl fell pregnant, that was the end of their schooling. It was like a death sentence to them. Now with the re-entry policy, the girls, they have a, a chance to come back and continue in school. I went back to school and I sat for grade 12 exams. I, when results came out, I did well. I came from a rural place. I wasn't used to the University of Zambia being alone, providing for yourself. We as Camped staff will ensure that that transition is as smooth as possible. So it helped me to settle and get used to the environment. In most cases, they are the first generation of uh, students from their own families to get into college. So it is changing the, um, the paradigm of just the levels of education that these girls are attaining. It's so amazing that I managed to get my degree now I am a teacher, I'm working and my husband is working. So we are able to meet our daily needs to provide for our children to pay for their school fees. All of them, they go to private schools. I teach social studies, particularly civic education. Uh, we deal with political rights, how people are supposed to interact with their political leaders and what role they are supposed to take as citizens. It is important to give back to the community 
because I wouldn't want to see a young women going through what I went through. I would want them to get empowered. As we engage with the communities, they're slowly realizing that it's important to educate girls. They've seen these girls come out of the poverty-stricken uh, environment and get into well-paying jobs, and slowly the trend is changing. The mother support groups are a group of community members. These are parents, mothers who come together. They come up with an income generating activity and then they go back to the schools that are nearby and support children who are in need. They support them in terms of buying them books, pencils, they also do the feeding program. So Comfort mainly helped through providing guidelines on the setup of the mother support groups, providing them with grants and trainings and skills. If there's any activity going out in school, I rush, go there, join them, so that I should be knowing new things in life. So right now, I think I'm going to be a sports captain because of how I portray myself when it comes to sports, activities. In a help desk, we've got a lot of activities that go on, like debates, then also do drama on HIV and AIDS, teaching others. Through the help desks, they are trained in life skills, negotiation skills, skills of being assertive. Doka has become focused. She has become determined. She's the one who is active, teaching her friends, exchanging ideas. There are those who learn things from their friends, while they cannot learn things from a teacher. So that's why it's important to have a learning circle in a school. The learning circle is uh, supposed to help the, the students to, to tackle the subjects that are difficult for them. It feels very nice because I have that opportunity to teach my fellow pupils and guide them in a way that I'm supposed to guide them. I'm encouraging other girls not to be shy, not to bring themselves down, just to have that confidence that they can be somebody in future. In Zambia, we have over 7,700 uh, Kama members. They're a movement of young women who have uh, been supported through school and are now independent. They are in politics, they are working in hospitals, in schools, involved in all kinds of careers. We have uh, people like Alice, a young woman who is now a campaign uh, program officer. It's a group of sisters who are there to support you, who are there to address the challenges that you're going through, who are there to work hard and make a difference in the community. So we target different areas and locations, like for, for example the hospitals, we look at the prisons, and then we look at the old aged and see how we can help them out by maybe cleaning the surrounding and then providing them with basic needs. We also support children in schools by providing them with school fees, school requisites such as stationery, maybe a full uniform. So I'm currently fostering two girls. The two girls that I'm fostering come from a background whereby they have been abandoned by parents. They have almost been pushed into early marriage. It's a great motivation to me, knowing that I can be able to support the same way that I was supported. Alice is a special young woman. She knows where she's come from, and therefore that adds even to, uh, to the level of responsibility that uh, she is inputting in her work, as well as in her role as ambassador, really, for the young people. I grew up in a family of 10. My father passed away when I was young, and my mother could not fend for all 10 siblings. It was a great struggle, and it was difficult for us. And at the age of 14, I almost dropped out of school. And that is when everything just got so complicated. At that point, I was put on the comfort support. Um, being in school and given another opportunity, I worked so hard and ensured that I completed my education and pursued a diploma in human resource. And then I also obtained a degree in sociology. Now I use my mind as a key to address the challenges that the girls are encountering in the community. 
As a youth representative, I stand and represent the youth globally. Last year, I went to Norway to represent the youths and young girls in the rural areas where I spoke about how they can be supported and empowered in the different countries. Being able to stand and motivate young girls has really given me confidence. I was really a shy person some time back, but now I'm able to stand in the midst of many people and address them. We hope that uh, one day a common member will be a president of, uh, <laughs> of Zambia and indeed of any other country because these are unique young women. I transformed from that vulnerable child to somebody who was empowered and independent. And it feels great. Now I'm in my new school and I've got new friends and we're learning new subjects. Chipo has been given a second chance in life. She is continuing her education, which will enable her to reach her fullest potential. The first day that we came, we never even slept. We are just busy making noise, so we felt very happy. At the start of its school year, we look at the results of the learners. Zox then pays the school fees as we identify the best schools where these learners can go to. And then from there, we have to organize them together and give them their school supplies. For a child who's moving from a day school, going into a boarding school, we need to prepare them for that transitioning so that they don't get a shock as they move to boarding schools. I've done so many new things. Uh, I've joined new clubs. Uh, like the girls' leadership and the Red Cross. The girls' leadership teaches us how to keep ourselves as girls and how to respond to the environment that we live in. Yeah, I do have so many things that I want to do and that I get inspired to. I want to be an entertainment prefect because I like entertainment a lot. Oh, I've seen Chipo grow in the past two years. She's developed, she's become a person who's now confident and she's able to interact with a guidance and counseling teacher. You know, with the psychosocial support they're providing, we're expecting these girls to be more assertive and just be, you know, young leaders that uh, we're looking forward to raising as a country. A long time ago, I used to think as if school is just a boring thing, there's nothing very interesting about school. But now I know that you can do so many things in school and you can be what you want in future if you complete school. We expect Chipo to be a leader in future. She's got leadership qualities. Um, my journey in education is going to be a very, very long journey. I'm so excited about the future and I don't dream big about myself. Huh? We believe education is an equalizer and it's a driver to economic development and national development. If children are given an opportunity to progress with their education, it's even better for the country because an educated population it's a population that's ready to develop its own country.